time to talk through the stories that have got you talking today with Vanessa and Michelle Gale. Welcome to both of you this morning. So let's start off with this. Matt Hancock announced last night the lockdown will be eased for the two million vulnerable people in England who are shielding. From the 6th of July, people shielding could meet up with up to six people. And from the 1st of August, shielding could end completely. So, uh, Vanessa, let's start with you first of all. Do you think that vulnerable people will trust in this? Just because Matt Hancock says, or the government is deciding, do you think that they will feel at ease to come out of their homes? Well, I hope that very, very gently they will gradually put one toe out, then another, and then ease themselves in their own comfort level out of this lockdown because their isolation and seclusion has been so dramatic. I mean, it really has been a curtailing of everything that we all like best in life. It really has. And some people have been so dreadfully lonely. So though this must come as a cataclysmic shock, you wouldn't expect them to be out there in the scrum straight away. But I hope they will ease out gradually and start to enjoy life so much more. Because, uh, Michelle, these are people who've been trapped inside for over three months. Yes, I have so much respect. My my mum has been one of those people. And um, in fact, we only saw her for the first time on Sunday. I could cry. So um, uh, it was really, really tough. So um, I know she'd be very relieved. And I, and I hope all those people out there, I've got so much respect for you and the families that have stayed away because that was a really hard one to deal with. Yeah. Um, I mean, more. it's looking like more things are going to open up. July the 4th has been dubbed Super Saturday. Uh, Boris... Or England's Independence Day. England's Independence <laughs> Day, yeah. <laughs> Boris Johnson is expected to announce that um, this is when museums, pubs, cinemas, hairdressers uh, can finally <laughs> open. Um, but Vanessa, yes, I mean, a sigh of relief all oh. round here. Well, I mean, is this going to be the day we're all hoping for? Well, I really do hope so. I'm absolutely aching to do all sorts of things. I just want to feel like myself again. I think that's all anyone wants. Safely, carefully, at a social distance. But to start to do the things that made life worth living, the extra fun bits that we've missed so much. So I hope it's going to be a fantastic day of liberation. But everybody's going to remember there's still a virus out there. Don't go crazy. Don't be silly, but have a brilliant time. I've, if the cinemas can open, then I don't understand why theatres aren't in that mm, list. Get, get the theatres is back open. It is so frustrating. I'm currently Hermione Granger and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and we are desperate to get out there. And I don't think people realise that 70% of theatres will run out of money by the end of the year. Yeah. So they're not getting any help from the government with funding, and we're not getting any signs of when we can open. And that's putting 290,000 jobs at risk. Well, Andrew and many Lloyd of them Webber, um... into any other plans and are not making any money. Yeah. It's so frustrating to yeah. hear that cinemas can open, but then not theatres. Andrew weird. Lloyd Webber said that social distancing in theatres is not possible, but he's going to use the London Palladium to try um, a series of safety measures in July. So temperature checks on the door, antiviral chemicals given to the audience members, um, uh, silver ion self-cleaning door handles installed. Um, but I, I, I maintain, if you can open cinemas, you can open theatres. Let's get everybody back to work. Yeah. That, that's Thank possible. Goodness. Just be careful. Thank you, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, for doing that. But, you know, we do need the government to help too, you know, not just an individual. Yeah, yeah, OK. Um, this uh, this uh, Tory health minister, um, so it's uh, Helen Whateley, faces furious backlash after claiming student nurses are not deemed to be providing a service to the NHS. You can imagine that up and down the country, she says student nurses are supernumerary, they're not deemed to be providing a service. Whilst they may be providing limical, limited clinical duties, this is under close supervision, uh, they're not being paid to staff hospitals. Uh, nurses up and down, these student nurses up and down the country going, thank you very much indeed for that smack in the face. I mean, I really think that's so tone deaf because these young men and women were risking their lives on the front line. Nobody told them they were supernumerary when we were desperately dependent on them and we needed them to provide, you know, TLC and also all the medical knowledge that they've acquired. How can they not be worth paying? It doesn't make any sense and it's so unfeeling. It feels all wrong. Um, and Michelle, it's mad, isn't it? Like, not that long ago, every Thursday night, the, the, the nation was united in clapping for carers, showing their appreciation for the NHS. The backbone of that was many of these nurses actually holding up and here we are talking about this. Then, weren't they? they weren't when we were clapping every Thursday. I just think that um, there's been like a massive 
kind of assessment of intelligence from reeling off stats and, and numbers, but actually emotional intelligence is becoming more and more important. And, and people like Helen Waitley just really explain why emotional intelligence is important, because to treat 25,000 student nurses like that who have risked their lives to help us is just appalling, and I hope she apologises. I uh, very quickly want to, to just mention this one, uh, Michelle. Uh, this is a White Lives Matter banner flown over the Etihad Stadium yesterday. I have to laugh, sorry. Um, and uh, and that's, that's uh, Burnley fan Jake Heppel claimed responsibility for the stunt. Um, your thoughts? Um, I'm laughing because... For me, this is just so much ignorance surrounding Black Lives Matter. And I'm a person who's followed football all my life. And one of the proudest moments I've ever had in football is seeing Black Lives Matter on the back of those football shirts. Because now in their home, they're introducing conversations that with amongst people that wouldn't normally have conversations about the, 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 the issues surrounding... We've only got five seconds, Black Michelle. Black Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, being black in this country. And, you know, black women are five times more likely to die in childbirth. Yeah. You know, people need to Google this stuff and realise that we're bringing awareness to something we, uh, we that wouldn't normally be discussed. I'm so, so sorry. sorry to interrupt. I'm so, so sorry. sorry. We, we've, got to, we've got to cross over to the loose women.